Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. If you're just joining us, the fall primary elections are coming up on August 14th, and today we have the privilege of meeting a few of the candidates who will be on the ballot. Longtime Milwaukee legislator Leon Young, he represented the 16th Assembly District since 1993, and recently he announced that he won't be seeking re-election. We have two candidates vying for that seat here today. One of them is Kaylin Haywood II, who was born, raised, and educated in Milwaukee's 16th District. Hi, Kaylin. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. Good to have you back. I'm glad to be back. Now, we got a lot to talk about because the last time you were here, you were the president of the Milwaukee Youth Common Council, and I knew you had, uh, <laughs> you know, politics in your blood. We, but actually, we actually spoke about this at, at the time, last time I was here. Yeah, and so you're not wasting any time. You hit the ground running and you're ready to uh, take this on. Uh, what motivated you to really uh, go for this position in the state assembly? Well, being in politics on the youth council, being involved in organizations like West Carroll, Wisconsin, Urban Underground, and doing community organizing, I always knew I wanted to be in politics. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be effective and change when it comes to get government levels. So when I thought about which level of government to run for, states seem like the best fit right now. Okay. They get to handle policy, legislation, and budget. On the Youth Council, we had 10% of the city of Milwaukee's reprogramming dollars to allocate. Mm -hmm. So working with the budget every single year, working with the Finance Committee at the Common Council, looking over the budget, asking some questions about it, saying, oh, maybe this should go here, maybe this shouldn't go here. Being a part of the budget process at the state that determines what the city gets, and the city, we're going through some tough times right now. Mm -hmm. The budget is kind of tight. So I want to find ways when I go to the state to find ways to move the money around that we already have and get the city some more money so we can fund better programming and just fund Milwaukee with the funding it needs. Yeah, so if you've really thought about it, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, right now you're serving as the chair of the Common Council's uh, Restorative Justice Initiative Advisory Board? Yes. Okay, yes. so talk a little bit about that and uh, what role you play. So with that, um, a, a, couple, a couple years ago, mm -hmm. about four maybe, I actually took a trip up north to a conference and there was a small county from Wisconsin that was there. Mm -hmm. And they had a youth court. So they, they had a youth court that gave their young people a second chance when they messed up. And I thought, man, that's crazy. I never, I never heard of Forest County. Mm -hmm. But being in Milwaukee, the biggest city in the state, we don't have one. <laughs> in my district we have 53206, mm -hmm. some of the highest incarceration rates in the country but we still don't have one in our city. So immediately that weekend, I'm texting the city clerk, texting some other state reps at the time. I'm like, we need this in Milwaukee. What do you think about it? And they're like, that's a good idea. You should do it. So I came back and immediately hit the ground running on it. The youth council decided under my leadership that we would create a separate body to take that on. On that body, I'm like, we need all the stakeholders to make that happen on that board. Mm -hmm. So I convinced the mayor's office, the common council, the municipal court, the community development block grant office, Milwaukee Public Schools and the Milwaukee Police Department that it, the time was not to get that done. So they're all on the board, each are represented, the assistant chief is on the board himself, but each of those parties are on the board. Mm -hmm. So we're all hands on deck for it. We feel like now is the time to give young people that second chance, invite them in and give them those resources, give them that helping hand and set them down the right path. Yes, and I think that a lot of people would uh, probably agree that sometimes you need to hear uh, that voice from a different generation to give a different uh, viewpoint of some of the things that we see going on today. So uh, what is it that you have to say to people who may be thinking, wow, he's really young to uh, want to be on that level of government. What do you say to that? Well, in order to run for state rep, you have to be 18. And considering that I'm 19, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little older than I have to be. So that's the first thing. Uh -huh. But the second thing is, when we watch the headlines over and over again about what's going on in the city, a lot of the issues we have when it comes to crime, and a lot of people that are falling at the hands of the justice system, they're my age. Mm -hmm. And for time, and for time, long times now, the, the, our electeds and our city community leaders, they have all been trying to figure out what can they do to fix the problems? Mm -hmm. What can they do to reach young people and get something done? So. When you, young people speak one language, is what it seems like, and the elders speak another language. 
No one's understanding each other. So it creates this generation gap. Mm -hmm. So I want to work as that gap, since I am bilingual in both languages. <laughs> I want to help the elders understand the young people and the young people understand the elders. And with that conversation being, the gap being filled, we can actually get something done. We can mm -hmm. stop seeing the same headlines over and over again. Yeah. So I'm the best translator for that. Okay, that's And a then great also, answer. no one was asking me about my age when I was allocating over half a million dollars. <laughs> so I don't know what the problem is now. I'm trying to figure it out too. No, and I don't think it's a problem. I just think that people have been conditioned to think that you have to uh, finish college and do these things before you do that. But like I said, I met you uh, some years ago and you've always been driven. So it doesn't surprise me that you are taking this on at your age, but in asking that question, I do think that it's just people uh, who are conditioned in the way they think they're supposed to be a pattern of, you know, politics, even go to college, get married, have a baby, you know. Yeah, but with, with the way things are going right now, mm -hmm. we've been stuck in our ways doing the same old, same old traditions, and clearly it's not working for us. <laughs> so it's how we change that narrative, change the mentality, change the mindset, and change the path we're going in. So if you want you want different, you have to do different, and that's what we're starting to do now. Well, I think you make your point uh, very well in uh, arguing that you're ready to take on this task. So uh, you've had an opportunity to be around a lot of other elected officials. So what would you say you've learned from uh, dealing with them and different issues? What did you take away from that? I've learned that being an elected official isn't an easy job at all. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult job. Yeah. At the same time, it's a very important job. You are a public servant. You're not elected. You're a public servant. Your job is to be a voice for the people who don't have voices. So being a voice for the voiceless. So every day when you wake up, your main objective is to make an impact. So I learned from my mentors and the other electors I've been around that I have to, when I am elected, I have to wake up every day, be that public servant, and do what I'm asked to do for the better of my people. Okay, and Kaylin, I want you to talk about uh, an issue that's closest to your heart that you'd like to tackle. Well, my three things, um, I, when I thought about what's wrong with the 16th district, there's a lot of things wrong with mm -hmm. it. There's a long list of problems we have. And after hours of trying to figure out which ones I'm going to focus on, I picked three. Mm -hmm. One, we have to fix the education system. It's very important. Our young people, they're, they're not graduating. It's time that we help them get, and give them the resources and bring our graduation rates up to higher standards. Mm -hmm. Two, we have to create jobs. We talk about creating jobs all the time, but we also don't talk about creating a clear path. Mm -hmm. There's roadblocks in the way of stopping people from getting jobs. Transfer, lack of transportation, lack of education, and of course, criminal backgrounds. There are hardworking Milwaukeeans who want to work, make a difference, and contribute to society. So me being their elected official, I have to make, do what I can to make it easier for them to get there. And then also three, we have to build safer communities. Mm -hmm. Our elders feel it, our young people feel it. They're not safe in their, they don't feel safe in their own homes, their own neighborhoods. It's time we change that. All right, well you are uh, definitely making sure people know that you're out here, you're knocking on doors, <laughs> yeah. and you're uh, making sure they know that you are uh, vying for this position, and you know that I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you, thank All you, right. thank you. Congratulations. Kaylin Haywood II, he's a candidate for the Wisconsin Assembly 16th District, and you can find out more about his campaign at Haywood, the number four, assembly.com. When we come back, we'll talk to another candidate running for the Wisconsin State Assembly in the 16th District. We'll meet and discuss the issues with County Supervisor Supreme Moore Amakunde right after this.